G'day everybody, I'm Rob Teal and welcome to The Shed. Today I'm going to talk to you a bit about Daryl and Suzanne's 1925 Dodge that I've been restoring. Now for those of you who have been following the build on Facebook, you'll know that we didn't start with much of a car. In fact, all we had was this front section and the reason for that was, during the Depression and the Second World War, farmers and business people could get more petrol coupons for a ute than they could for a car. So they simply just took the back of the cars off, threw them away and put a wooden tray on them and they became a ute. So today, I've been replicating the original body at the back. Now I haven't had much to work on. This car is fairly unique in Australia, simply because it's a fully imported body. Local content laws of the day said that three out of four cars had to have locally built bodies. Well, this car is the one in four. So I've been working from pictures from the internet and information that I've gained from Facebook groups and you wonderful people out there that have helped me out with photos and the like. So we've got most of the body section in place now and it's really quite involved. It's the biggest body fabrication that I've taken on. I've built replica ute bodies and pickup bodies for these sorts of cars before, but I've never built a touring car body before. And interestingly enough, and a surprise to me, it's the inner structure that seems to take the most amount of work. The outside skins, you wheel them, you shape them, you put the bead lines on there, and in the space of a day you've achieved quite a lot, and it looks like it's a whole lot of carbon made. But when you start making these intricate forms inside here, getting them all to fit and line up, and then duplicating the reverse, the mirror image for the other side of the car, that involves a fair bit of work. And then the welding time also. So there's a lot of welds that have gone in through here that originally would have been a spot weld and done in seconds. I've done them with a plug type weld by drilling a hole through the outside skin, clamping it. Sometimes I've had to tech screw it to hold it in place tight enough to weld it, welding it and then grinding it and also being aware of the fact that if you pump a heap of heat into these panels, you're gonna get a lot of distortion. So it's a time consuming process. Finding pictures of the framework at the back of the car is difficult. Fortunately, I found on the internet some pictures of derelict cars that people had just enough of a camera angle to pick up some of this structure in the back of it. And then, We've known the length of the doors, we've calculated that out from pictures, and so I've made calculations for where the back seat base would go and things like that. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. This last week, I've been working on the doors. Now, like the tub section, to make the skin, it's a relatively simple procedure. A bit of wheeling to get the fullness in the panel. It's fairly easy to calculate out the angles for the sides and put the bead line along the top of it. Now, these have been done in a couple of sections. So there is this panel, it will wrap around the frame at the bottom. It'll come up the full height. It's got the bead line on the top, but I've only gone half the width across the top panel. And the second section will have the inside formed edge on it and it'll be welded along the top. And I've already done that with the other door. So here's the other door and the stage I've got it to, but I'll just pull the frame out and I'll show you what I mean. Now this is the top section that I've made. So the second piece of steel runs from the weld line on the top down, forms this inside edge part of the door and the lip on the bottom of it, which the frame's going to weld to. So relatively simple to fold, but there is a little bit of a curve in the top of it. And so I folded this on the pan brake and I've added a curve to it this way, just by simply bending it over my knee. And then the little bit of a curve on the top I put one of my T-dollies in the um, vise and I've just hammered it over the edge to just roll the top of it a little bit before I welded it together. Now once these two edges were butted together along here, I would already put some curve in the panel by shrinking this top edge along here and this one that I'd bent by hand. Once they're tacked together, they become stable because although we get a bit of shrinkage on the weld, the shrinkage is equal on both sides and they can't move. So what actually happens is the welds will want to pull the piece of metal in together, but because we've got the stiffness from this line out here where it's folded down and the same thing, it's almost a box section on this side, it's very stable. So if you get your tacks 50 mil, two inches apart all the way along the top panel, you can start welding the sections in between without any danger of it changing shape. And the door skin itself actually fits very well on the body. So this is, 
this is the left door. It's still got to be folded onto the frame. This line will overlap the body just back here and this one will come back a bit closer and there'll be a door gap between this edge and the edge of the pillar there. And I'm working on about 3 16 of an inch gap there and I've got about 3 16 overlap and that's roughly what the front door's got as well. So by the time we align the body, it's all going to look very nice. Now the tricky bit. I've never made a complete door before and one of those things took me a little bit out of my comfort zone. I've made a lot of frame repairs on car doors of all ages. I've made many door skins before. So this is new ground for me. I'm making a complete door from nothing, like working from a picture basically. So getting the shape right was the first problem. I knew roughly what it had to look like because I've got the front door. And the front door's got this door pocket in, which is what I'm working on here. The back door's got one hinge on the top, which matches the design of the front doors. And then the bottom hinge is actually outside the body. And I'm not entirely certain how that actually even works at this stage. I haven't found any pictures of that. So if there's any wonderful people out there who happen to own a 1925 Dodge Touring Car and you want to send me some pictures, I'd be very grateful, guys. Um, the door pocket's well on its way. I've wheeled up this section here because comparing it to the front door, there's quite a bit of dish in it both ways. So I've done the same with my replacement panel and I've got these edges rolled in and I've made a little checking strip of metal which is cut to this profile so I can actually check the depth and the curves as I go. This piece here still needs some more work on it and I've got to roll the edges up a bit more and then it'll be trimmed to fit into the door and I'll do a butt weld all the way around. At one stage I was feeling very happy with myself and thinking that I was well and truly on the money for getting all of these angles right. But there's a bit of a twist across the door and that changes everything. So I made the first one, I got all this section in here formed and that's quite complicated. It's got this zigzag in it through there and I've done that with two pieces of metal again. The parent piece that I folded this edge over and then put the second step into it and then I've welded this outside edge on there because the metal's just not going to let you do that. You're going to tear something or tear your hair out or something like that. The, um, as far as the angles go, I measured everything. I put a bar across the top of the door opening, used a gauge to measure the angles off there and got these front edge pretty happy, back edge pretty happy, and then calculated the bottom edge and the door didn't want to fit in the hole. And I'm thinking, what do I do here? So I tried it back in the skin and I worked out that if I split the top out and just opened it up a little bit, it corrected everything. Now, this split at the back doesn't matter because I'm going to take this section out of the door and put the piece in for the door hinge anyway. So the only weld that will be left in it that wasn't originally planned is this little one across here. And I just opened that out and I've only welded the gap. So that's how small that one was. So once the pocket's welded in, we can move on to the, the door hinge location. And in this spot in here, it's gonna have the opening made for the door latch. And that's just simply duplicating it off the front. So. It appears that they've got the same door latches left and right on the front and they'll be right and left on the back because the doors face the other way. Now once again, if anybody's got a derelict 1925 Tourer with a bud body on it from America, I'd be very interested in some back door hardware because I haven't got any of that as well. So there we go, a bit of work on the Dodge. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Rob Teal. We'll try and keep you more up to date in future.